Hey, what up, my fellow creatives? This is Eugene from Worker Bee Supply, and today we got another freelance tip for you. We're talking about one of my favorite topics, and that's doing work for magazines, specifically how you can become a magazine photographer. I just got back from a shoot for the New York Times, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to run through the exact steps I took to build out my client list and first break into magazine photography. So we're gonna cover a few topics. First of all, we're gonna talk about what is editorial photography, then what kind of portfolio you need to do magazine work, how to find clients, how to approach them in the right way, and finally, how to actually get hired. All right, along the way, we're gonna sprinkle in a few fun resources that will make it even easier for you to follow this process and get into editorial work. So if this is something you're interested in, come along. All right, so the first thing to be clear about is exactly what is magazine photography. Magazine photography and what is often called in the industry is editorial work. That means you're taking photographs for magazines. You're basically providing the images that are gonna fill out the story and give people a visual peek into what is being discussed in the story. So oftentimes there's a big mix, you know, it could be there's people who are just portrait editorial photographers, it's people who only do food and work for food magazines, but oftentimes, and for me, the more interesting projects are ones where you get to spend a little more time, maybe a day, maybe a few days, and photograph a feature length story where there's multiple images, it's told across many pages, it might be on the cover, um, really build like a mini documentary project. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about editorial photography or photographing for magazines. If you think about it along those lines, what kind of portfolio do you need? You know, you don't, you can't have just like one type of image in your portfolio where it's like all oh, fashionable young people hanging out, looking fabulous. You need to be able to photograph anybody in any location and often for a very short amount of time. So in your portfolio, make sure there's different types of genres of photography. There's portrait photography, there's interiors, there's landscapes, there's product, there's food perhaps. You know, you don't gotta do everything, but I think it does help with certain types of magazines, especially if you're in smaller markets, uh, to be able to do all those different types and demonstrate that in your portfolio. You should also show kind of like a series of images. So a few different images from the same story. Often you'll be hired to kind of like flesh out and illustrate a literal story that someone has written. So, you know, can you, combine like several images and not just walk away with that one shot, but walk away with a small body of work that all of it could be published. Um, the other thing I would say, once you get past like different subject matter, is you need to not just photograph like awesome, beautiful, well-designed things. You know, anyone can photograph a beautiful architectural marvel, but a small kind of danky office, um, you need to be able to get in there and take really evocative, effective photographs in any space. Same thing, people of different age groups, you need to be able to photograph young people, kids, older people, uh, seniors, people at every age and stage of their career, because uh, often you will be thrown into those situations. So if you only have experience just kind of like photographing apathetic uh, teenagers, um, that's not gonna fly well and you might not be considered for those other kinds of jobs. And that's what really you're trying to do. You're both trying to make yourself, uh, kind of give yourself a unique look, but really open yourself up to the type of work that you could do. That's the kind of portfolio I would try to build is like a mix of a different portfolio. When I first started out, um, I had a lot of kind of like environmental landscape type photos, but I was very bad at portraiture. So what I did is I created a personal project called Atlas where I would photograph different people every week um, and do uh, environmental lit with flash portrait in their homes um, and also do an interview with them. So I can kind of see how that like story could be brought to life in their photograph. Through that, I built a portfolio of about like 52 portraits after doing it for a year. And I used that portfolio as the first step to getting editorial work. And that's really what got my foot in the door is this like wide mix of portraits taken in very different situations with all sorts of different people. Um, so I really highly recommend, you know, if you don't have a fleshed out portfolio, take some time to build that body of work and get that good mix of images going. 
Once you've got your portfolio, you need someone to pitch it to. So who are your clients when you're doing editorial work? So you might think, you know, oh, I should contact the writer of an article or the editor of a magazine. But there's actually a few very specific roles that hire photography in an editorial context. Um, and those typically tend to be either the photo editor or the art director. Now, often those are interchangeable and a publication might have only one of those. You know, if it's, they mostly use photography, it'll typically be called, they'll typically be called a uh, photo editor. Sometimes if they do a broader uh, type of work, they will, they will be called an art director or uh, art buyer. But those kind of three jobs are the ones you're looking for. Um, they're the people who will directly reach out to you and hire you. They're the people you need to befriend and kind of like get on their contact lists uh, and get on their mind. So how do you find these people? There's a couple techniques I use um, to basically build lists of these kind of people. Um, the first and easiest thing and something I would recommend everyone do is go to your local newsstand and kind of like look through the magazines. You will see on pretty much every single magazine in the first few pages around the table of contents, there will be a masthead, and that's a list of all the people who work on the actual magazine. If you go down that list and look for those names, the photo editor, the art director, the art buyer possibly, essentially you wanna look at the magazines that your work kind of fits into, uh, you know, topics that you're actually passionate about and interested in covering. Um, also things that you have in your portfolio. So if you wanna apply for a magazine but you have none of that work in your portfolio, I would really recommend going back and first getting more of that work in your portfolio before reaching out to them. So jot down those names and then literally you can go online and research those people, You know, find their emails. If you need help figuring out how to find people's emails, leave us a comment uh, below. We use a few techniques to make this really easy. Um, so I'm happy to make a video about it for you if that's something you're interested in. But find those emails and you're gonna have to reach out to them. So before you do that, there's a few other ways I find uh, potential clients. So a great one is looking at other creators' work. So go to other photographers' websites. If they're an editorial photographer, often they'll list like exactly what magazines they have worked with. So that's great. You can kind of like go down that list and go to those magazines' websites. They will also often have mastheads that you can then research and reach out to those uh, people. Then the last kind of tip I'll give is looking at different awards. So in the editorial world, there's a lot of different awards and that's something you can kind of look through and see what magazines are winning awards. Usually they'll have that art director who worked on that story listed in that award. Um, and again, this just helps you build a bigger and bigger list of potential clients for you to reach out to. So you've got your portfolio, you've got your list of clients. If you're trying to figure out how many people to reach out to, I like to set large volume goals. So for me, when I was starting out, you know, probably like many of you, you're not sure whether or not this is the right fit for you, whether you can make it as an editorial photographer. For me, I set the goal of reaching out to 100 magazines. So if I reached out to 100 magazines and none of them replied to me or hired me or anything, then you know what, maybe this is not for me. I should go pursue other work. But what actually happened is after like 10 or 20, a few of them started replying, you know, saying thank you for sending us your work. We'll keep you on our list. Um, so I started getting feedback and chances are when you set your goal that wide, um, you will also get some feedback. And you know, if you don't, then maybe it's not for you. But um, I think give yourself an opportunity to fail and then still give your chances, give yourself a chance to succeed over the longer term because it is, it can be a tricky world to break into. Um, and it's something that a lot of people wanna do, but there's a very limited number of magazines and spots in each magazine. So give yourself time, give yourself that breath and opportunity to hit enough people uh, that you might land on a few at the right time um, and get some good responses. So I would recommend to start your list, build 100 potential people to reach out to. It seems like a lot, um, and I think that's exactly the point. These things take time. To make it easy for you to begin reaching out to people, we've got a starter list we've compiled of about 100 magazines, as well as different awards 
um, and you know publication companies that you can use to build your own list and that's linked down in the description below uh, so you can grab that there for free um, so once you've got that and you built your list you know you've got a strong portfolio the next step is to reach out there's a lot of ways people can really get really creative with reaching out but from talking to photo editors the most effective thing is just a simple email to them I know Oftentimes people say, oh, you should do a crazy mailer or try to like call them. These people are very busy and they get a lot of crap in the mail. By far, most of them prefer to just get an email from you to introduce yourself and your work, you know, link to the website. All the work that I've ever gotten for magazines has been through email. So I would highly recommend, at least on your first pass, just sending an email. If you're not sure what to write, Again, we created a small downloadable thing for you in the description, which is basically a series of email scripts that you can use as a starting point. You know, I recommend modifying these quite a bit, but at least it will give you an idea of what to write and how to reach out. Uh, don't just copy paste this and send this out because then everyone will send the same thing and it'll look not professional, but use the structure and kind of modify it to get, let your own voice shine through and show off your own work. So again, check both the list of magazines and places to find clients, as well as the email scripts for reaching out down in the description below. And both of those are free for you to use. So last step, you know, you've got your portfolio together. You found a huge list of clients. You've been working your way through reaching out to those clients but you're not hearing a lot back. Maybe you heard a couple people email and say, oh, cool work, thanks, we'll keep you in mind, but you haven't gotten that job yet. What's the problem? So here's the thing. There's a lot of people who want to be editorial photographers, and there's only a few magazines. And if you look at one magazine, you know, flip through and count how much original photography they have. Might be only like four or five shoots for that magazine. Especially if you live in smaller markets uh, where there isn't a lot of like magazines, or if the bigger magazines aren't necessarily doing a lot of stories in your area, you might not get that call right away. And really, it's about playing your long game and following up with those clients, kind of keeping them updated on new work, showing them that you're still working and interested, you know, connecting with them online, and just keeping your name top of mind. When the right opportunity comes up, typically, you know, they have a list of photographers they use. So maybe a few of them won't be available and then they'll realize the type of work you do or the style is perfect for that story and they'll kind of give you a chance on a smaller story. And once you're in the door that way, again, just keep updating them, keep it going. Um, sometimes it can take a year or even two years before you start working for a new magazine client from when you first reach out to them. But it does happen. It just, honestly, it takes a while. Um, and oftentimes it just has to be like a mix of different circumstances where it all comes together to get you that job, like that only you could pull off in that scenario at that time. And that's your foot in the door. So be polite, don't be too pushy, but just, you know, every like three months, every half a year, follow up with a quick email, maybe a new blog post that you've done or show them a project you're really excited about. Could be a creative, it doesn't have to be a commercial project. You know, and just be like, hey, still teaching base. I saw the story you did. If you can kind of comment on the work they're doing, I think that's great. It shows that you're like invested in the magazine, not just trying to get work. And basically keep reaching out. You know, it's at this stage later on, once you've had some work, you can start doing mailers and kind of promos to keep your work again, top of mind. You wanna just be constantly reminding people and give them time. It's great to follow up, especially in that first email if you haven't heard back yet. You know, in a couple of weeks, follow up again and be like, I just wanted to make sure you got this. Um, here's my links to my work again, but I'd love to work with you. Please let me know if there's ever opportunity. So I know that seems like a kind of a long term process and there is no easy into this industry. Um, it really does take time, takes building trust, you know, doing multiple shoots at a high level. Uh, it can be hard because every shoot's unique and sometimes you don't have the opportunity to do the best job, but keep at it, keep showing your enthusiasm, keep connecting to people, showing them new work, um, and applying to kind of like as many magazines as possible. Oftentimes there's people apply to like the biggest magazines and I'll just say like, you're probably not gonna get those jobs right away. You're gonna need to spend time and practice on smaller publications, maybe trade publications that are industry specific, 
maybe ones that are specific to your town. Um, you know, like Wired Magazine isn't gonna hire you on the first email. They have a list longer than you can ever imagine of photographers that wanna work for them. But oftentimes, if they see you have good work, you know, you've connected with those people a few times, um, maybe someone recommends you uh, to replace them, that's how you get those bigger jobs. So you just need to be prepared. Uh, you need to have practiced on the smaller jobs and then you can grow from there and uh, tackle those bigger publications. So we, I hope this has been informative. If I missed anything or if you have any more detailed questions about the process I used, um, let me know. But this has worked really well for me. You know, I've done hundreds of shoots for editorial clients, um, everything from design shoots for European architectural magazines to shooting for the New York Times to um, doing food photography to doing longer cover stories. Um, it's really fun. It's really rewarding seeing people in coffee shops reading the article that your photos are in. Um, so for me, it's one of the most interesting and rewarding types of photography. Um, and I hope that this video makes it a little easier uh, and demystifies how you can get into it. So let me know if you have any questions. Remember those free resources, the email scripts and potential uh, client list are linked in the description below that you can get for free. Um, if you have any further questions, let us know. If you're struggling with how to tackle your first editorial shoot, let me know. Maybe we can make a video about that next. But yeah, I'd love to hear your input, hear how, if you're an editorial photographer, let us know in the comments what you used to, uh, what to approach you used to get into this type of work. And maybe share some of the work uh, you've done. Um, I'd love to see it personally. You know, if you've never done it, tell us what kind of magazine you're excited to work for or what would be your dream magazine. For me, it's always been magazines like Wired, uh, Fast Company, The Atlantic. So those are the kind of magazines I love and the types of stories I love to tell. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you're interested in and where you are in the process, all right? Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We have more freelance tips uh, and just other inspiring videos coming your way soon. All right, this is Eugene from Work Be Supply. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, bye.